Good morning, everyone. In today's video presentation, we shall be discussing about mechanics. And to start with, let us have the definition of mechanics. Mechanics is defined as the branch of physical sciences that is concerned with the state of rest or motion of bodies that are subjected to the action of forces. When we deal with bodies that are subjected to the action of forces, whether the body is rigid or not, whether the body is deformable or not, then this is called mechanics. Under mechanics, there are three branches. The first branch is the rigid body mechanics. In this branch of mechanics, the basic assumption is that bodies that are involved or subjected to loading are not deforming or not subjected to change in shape. In short, it is assumed that bodies that will be subjected or are subjected to loadings are rigid. The second branch of mechanics is the deformable body mechanics. In this branch of mechanics, the deformability or ability of the body to undergo shape change and their materials are already incorporated in the analysis. Their properties such as stress, ductility and other properties are now included in the study. The other one is the fluid mechanics. In this branch of mechanics, we deal now with the behavior of fluids at rest or in motion. In our discussion for this semester, we shall be dealing with one of the areas of rigid body mechanics and that is all about the static of rigid body. In this area of rigid body mechanics, we shall be dealing with the equilibrium of bodies that is those that are either at rest or move with a constant velocity. And the other area on the rigid body mechanics is the dynamics of rigid body where we shall be concerning with accelerated motion of bodies and will deal with the movement of systems of interconnected bodies under the action of external forces. Mechanics would not be possible and would not be easy if not for the contribution of the following person. The first is the Archim Archimedes was very, very known for his principle in buoyancy. He is the first to have the earliest contribution because of his writing of the principle of never and that of buoyancy. The other one, we also have Stevinus. Stevinus is very popular with his formulations of the laws of vector combination of forces. Next, we have Galileo. The first investigation of a dynamics problem is credited for him for his experiments with falling bodies. We also have Sir Isaac Newton who was credited for his accurate formulation of the laws of motion as well as the laws of gravitation. He also conceived the idea of the infinitesimal in mathematics analysis. We also have Da Vinci. Da Vinci is very popular because of his contribution by conceiving the idea of parachute, helicopter, solar power, calculators, and others. We also have Pierre Barino. 
who is very popular with his introduction of the principle of moments. In this application, it becomes very, very easy to compute for the moment of a force. We also have Leonard Euler. Leonard Euler carried integral calculus to a higher degree of perfection. He is also known for his contribution in analytic geometry. We also have Jean D'Alembert, who pioneered in the study of partial differential equations and also studied the equilibrium and motion of fluids. We also have Pierre Simon Laplace, who contributed much on the analytical discussion of the solar system, particularly on the calculation of the motions of the planet, determining their figures, and solving tidal problems. With the concepts of mechanics, we shall also be dealing with the term space, which is defined as that geometric region occupied by bodies whose position are described by linear and angular measurements relative to a, co to a coordinate system for three-dimensional problem three independent coordinates are needed for two-dimensional problems only two coordinates are required we also have time Time is defined as the measure of the succession of events, and it is actually a phase quantity in dynamics. Although time is not directly involved in the analysis of statics problems. We also have the term mass. Mass is defined as the measure of the inertia of the body. It is actually the resistance to a change of velocity, and mass can also be thought of as that of quantity of matter that is present in the body. The mass of the body affects the gravitational attraction force between it and other bodies. This force appears in many applications in statics. We also have the term rigid body. And what are rigid bodies? A rigid body can be considered as a combination of a large number of particles in which all the particles remain at a fixed distance from one another, both before and applying and after applying a load. This model is important because the body shape does not change when load is applied. In other words, Whenever the body do not change its shape, when they are subjected to an applied load, then the body is said to be rigid. What about a particle? A particle is defined as a body of negligible dimension. In the, in the mathematical sense, a particle is a body whose dimensions are considered to be near zero so that when we we may analyze it as a mass concentrated at a point we often choose a particle as a different element of a body we may treat a body as a particle when its dimensions are irrelevant to the descriptions of its position or the action of forces applied to it In the next presentation, we shall be discussing about the Newton's law of motion. We learned in our physics about this law of motion, and it's good that we try to recall these laws of motion. The first law of motion states that a particle originate, originally at rest or moving in a straight line with a constant velocity tends to remain in this state provided that this particle is not subjected to an unbalanced force. 
This explains that whenever we have a body, the body will remain in its position, will not change its state of motion if it will not be subjected to any unbalanced force. And that is the first law of motion. Let us imagine that we have here a body that is subjected to an acceleration V. This body is subjected to different forces F sub 1, F sub 2, and F sub 3. If this body is in equilibrium, meaning, okay, the first law would explain that this body will maintain its velocity if okay, these forces shall be in equilibrium. The second law states that a particle acted upon by an unbalanced force experiences an acceleration and that has the same direction as the force and a magnitude that is directly proportional to the force. To have an explanation, let us imagine that we have here a body that is subjected to an unbalanced force F. Then this body will have an acceleration which is directed in the same direction as that of F and whose magnitude is directly proportional to that F. Meaning, if F is greater, then acceleration would be greater. If F is smaller, then acceleration would be smaller. That is what we mean by the second law of motion. The third law of motion states that the mutual forces of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite, and collinear. Let us have this explanation. Imagine here that we have two bodies, A and B, and if A is subjected to a force coming from B equal to F, therefore A will also be sub will also be exerting a reaction upon B equal to the magnitude of the action of B, and that is also equal to F. We called it as the action reaction forces, meaning if a body is subjected to a force, the body will be exerting, exerting a reaction equal to the same magnitude of the force, and that is the third law of motion. Newton also states, formulated the laws of gravitational attraction, and according to this statement, the gravitational forces exist between every pair of bodies on the surface of the earth. The only gravitational force of appreciable magnitude is the force due to the attraction of the earth. And why would that be? Because the mass of the earth is very, very great. If it would be compared to the mass of any object, near the surface of the earth that is very very small therefore the gravitational attraction exerted by that small body upon the earth would be very very small but the gravitational attraction of the earth exerted by that small body would be appreciable in magnitude and we call that as the gravitational force and this gravitational force can be computed Okay, when the body is near the surface of the earth and it is expressed by the following expression, F shall be equal to the product of G times M1 times M2 divided by R, sub R squared, where F is the mutual force of attraction between the two particles. G represents the universal constant known as the constant of gravitation and that is equal to 66.73 times 10 to the negative 3 negative 12 meter cube per kilogram 
second square. M1 and M2 represents the mass of the two particles, and R represents the distance between the centers of the particle. For today, that is all about my discussion. We have discussed the basic fundamental of mechanics. Thank you for listening and good day.